Hey everyone, this is Jaron Smith from Noble Desktop, and I'm here to talk today about Premiere Pro and After Effects. Now, while I did call this session Premiere Pro versus After Effects, because there's some confusion sometimes about what those two programs do, and when you should use each program. But, and also I called it versus, it sounds kind of cool, I admit that. But really, the two applications, Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects, while they are similar to each other, they really have very specific uses. We're going to look today at the uses of Premiere Pro, the uses of After Effects, a little of their history, where they come from, and what they're intended to do. We're going to compare some of their features, and then we're going to jump into Premiere Pro and After Effects. And I'm going to show you how each of them is really intended to be used and where their strengths and weaknesses are, I'll show you some examples of that. And I'll also show you, hopefully I have time, to show you how they're supposed to work together. Because really, Premiere Pro and After Effects are kind of like two companion applications. The idea behind them is that, yes, they have some overlapping features, but really, they're intended to work together to accomplish your tasks, to create your videos. That's, that's kind of the point of that, okay? So if you're wondering why I have a headset in, it's just because I want to monitor the audio to make sure it's fine. Sounds, sounds good to me. Okay. So, and again, hi, I'm Jaron Smith. I am the program director for video editing and motion graphics at Noble Desktop. We're a software training company. And this is part of our free seminar series. We've been doing a whole bunch of seminars this, this last month or so. And... This is actually my last one in the series, but there's a bunch more for other things. So we're covering all kinds of stuff we teach, and we're also covering things like intro to data science and that kind of thing to kind of let you, like, learn as much as possible, which is our, our big thing. So let's look at what this does for us. Okay. So we're going to use... I'm going to use a, a slideshow very quickly. There's only maybe, I think... Maybe at most 15 slides. And then I'm going to show you some examples, show you the weaknesses. And then we're going to spend most of the time, hopefully, looking at the software and seeing, seeing what it can do for us. Okay. Now. So. And again, while I did call this Premiere Pro versus After Effects, hopefully you'll take from, from my presentation the idea that they're not really competitors as much as they are related software and as much as they are really software that can work together to help you accomplish your goals. Okay. So, After Effects. Okay, so a little bit about me, actually, before I talk, talk about After Effects. Uh, if you, maybe you saw from my video in the beginning, I'm, I've got gray hair. I'm a little old. Okay. So, I have been using After Effects and Premiere Pro for over 20 years. So neither of these programs, for the record, is, is new. Um, After Effects started in 93, um, which actually was the year before I graduated high school. And... Sorry, sorry, that was the that was two years after I graduated high school, actually. And um, Premiere Pro is, is really old, too. So I've been using them for, for 20 years, and honestly, they've been around and in the industry for a very long time. Neither of them were new when I first started using them. Okay. So After Effects was created by COSA, and that was 1993. Okay. And it was created to produce high quality broadcast animation. Okay. Now After Effects is a motion graphics, video compositing, and visual effects program. Now it's stronger in certain of those areas than others, but really it's intended to do the finishing of your video projects. This is Adobe description. Okay, you can create cinematic titles, intros, transitions, that sort of thing, all using After Effects. Okay. If you have ever seen a, a television show opening, probably After Effects. If you've ever seen graphics on screen in a sci-fi show, probably After Effects. Okay, so it's a pretty common program. Now, what do you need for it? Basically, it'll run on Mac and Windows, and you need, they recommend... The minimum 16 gigs of RAM. So they recommend actually more than that. 32, really, if you want to run it well. Okay. And 
computers with dedicated video cards run better. And that's pretty standard for most video programs. So that's not unusual. The 16 gig min is a little high, but not that much. Okay. So After Effects, like I said, is basically an animation and compositing program. So it's useful for anyone who wants to do those things. Now, when I say compositing, what am I talking about? You want to remove green screen from a video. That's compositing. You want to put that video with a new background. That's compositing. You want to make those two things look like they actually were shot in the same place, same lighting. That's compositing. Okay. You want to replace the screen on a phone, a cell phone, with a new app that you're demonstrating. That's compositing. Okay. You're going to make graphics follow someone around like the buzzing bees. That's compositing. But it's also a motion graphics program. It's an animation program. It animates and moves things. Okay. It's cool. So... One of the things to keep in mind is that it works really well with other Adobe software. So, but what's Premiere Pro? So Premiere Pro is actually older, by the way. It was created originally in 1991. That was... Wait, was that? Yes, that was before I graduated high school, actually. So, again, really pretty old program. Now, originally it was created as Premiere, and then Premiere Pro was how it was relaunched many, many years later. Okay. Now, it's made by Adobe, just like After Effects is, so they are related to each other. Premiere they made, After Effects they bought. But again, they've had both those programs for decades at this point. Okay. Now, Premiere Pro is a video editing program. And what do I mean by that? So video editing is the process of combining or splicing together video, audio, images, in order to basically combine them next to them as a new video file. So, I'm going to show you some examples of what what this actually looks like when you do it, okay? So, according to Adobe, Premiere Pro is an industry leading video editing program, okay? A lot of people use it for interviews. A lot of people use it for promotional, promo ads, that sort of thing. It's very commonly used by people creating social media content as well. So, it's one of the big three or so main video editing programs that exist Throughout the world. Basically, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, and Avid are probably the most the most well known throughout most of the world. Okay. Now its requirements are a little a little less. They the minimum RAM for that is eight gigs. But they recommend sixteen or more. So again, more more RAM is better on your computers. And again, these both softwares only run on Windows and Mac. So if you're using Linux or you're using Chromebooks, Chrome OS Affects and Premiere Pro don't run there. Okay. So there is something that you can use, not for Affects, but for Premiere Pro, called Adobe Rush. Adobe Premiere Rush is basically for Android and, I and iOS users. It runs on my it runs on my tablet, it runs on my phone. It's basically a scaled back version of Premiere Pro. It's mostly intended to create videos for social media, but it does have a wide variety of purposes. It's actually pretty good for editing on the go. It's not as powerful as a full desktop Premiere Pro application, but it's not bad. Okay. So, there's a question. Do movie studios use Premiere Pro? Okay, so, there are a couple of films that have used it. The original Deadpool film was edited in Premiere Pro. I believe Terminator Dark Fate was as well, but overwhelmingly, films are usually edited in a program called Avid. So, Premiere Pro's, for many, many years, Premiere Pro's main use was corporate video. Final Cut Pro dominated the um, independent film market, and Avid dominated the professional video film editing market, and high-end television few years ago, there were some shifts around that, and Final Cut Pro fell into his favor, and Premiere Pro became more popular. So while you were seeing it a lot in television use, it wasn't necessarily as common in films. Off the top of my head, I can remember a handful that used Premiere Pro. You get a lot of it in music videos, by the way. You get a lot of it at, um, oh, what is it? Uh, a lot of it at TV stations, cable TV stations now. But yeah, it varies. Film... Though, like, all the almost all the high-end films are usually avid. Don't hold me to that, by the way. They Very often, they have their own stuff. 
So if anybody has any questions, I am monitoring the chat window on my iPad here. So just just ask them, and hopefully I'll see them and be able to respond. Okay, there's a little delay, by the way, in me seeing them, but I'll try to get to them as, as I come. I'll also try to leave some time at the end for this for a QA. and a Anything I can't actually get to. Okay. So, there's Rush. Okay. Now, again, Premiere Pro is a video editing program, and... When I say video editing, I'm thinking of splicing video together. That's what I think, okay? Um, I know a lot of people, especially younger people than me, use the term video editing to refer to anything involving video. But Premiere Pro's thing is specifically combining different videos together to create a new video. And we'll look at what that means, okay? Now, it'll work with a wide variety of different types of video, types of audio, images, no problem at all. And again, just like After Effects, one of its main strengths is that it integrates very well with the other applications made by Adobe. So Premiere Pro integrates really well with After Effects. They work together. They're designed to. Graphics made in Photoshop and Illustrator can be important in Premiere Pro. And audio, edited in Audition, there's actually a workflow to jump back and forth between them. Okay. One of Adobe's major advantages, by the way, for both Premiere Pro and After Effects is the fact that they integrate with the other programs that Adobe makes. This is honestly one of the major strengths of having one company create a whole bunch of related software. Now, whether we like that or not, that's, that's a different issue. But one of the advantages of this is that the software is designed to work together. And again, I'll, I'll, we'll look at some of that a little today. If you're interested, I actually, one of our other seminars on this channel is a overview of all the programs in the Adobe Creative Cloud that relate to video. So that video looks at Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop Illustrator, how they come in, looks a little bit at Animate and Character Animator, and how basically they all tie together to be effectively a production studio in a box. But it is one of... of the major selling points of Creative Cloud is how they things work together. So a workflow might involve Premiere Pro and After Effects because they work together. Okay. Keep in mind, it's not always one or the other. Sometimes it's how can this work well for me? Okay. Photoshop for photo manipulation, adjustment. My brother's an illustrator. He paints in Photoshop. I don't. He does a pretty good job, by the way. I've seen his stuff. He's my brother. So I use Photoshop to manipulate and adjust images and pair them to be put in my videos. Maybe I'll get rid of a background so I can animate a new background with it or something in it in Photoshop. Sorry, in uh, After Effects. Maybe I just need to remove a background I'm using in a graphic so I can basically superimpose it over video in Premiere Pro. It varies. Illustrator. If I'm working with a company's logo, I'll usually get it as an Illustrator file or another vector format. Maybe I might have graphics like icons and stuff or avatars. Very often, those are made in Illustrator. And all of these come in, can be imported into Premiere Pro and After Effects without a problem. Okay. Premiere Pro works with Audition for audio repair and sweetening. Adobe Audition is Adobe's audio editing and manipulation program. Basically, it's like Premiere Pro, but for audio. Okay. And After Effects works with Cinema 4D, made by Maxon, for 3D modeling and animation work. So, again, what you're getting with the Creative Cloud is this really bunch of different programs okay now we're going to look at specifically use cases for premiere pro and after effects okay so premiere pro versus after effects in a straight head-to-head -head. like i said they are not intended to do the same jobs but they do have some overlap okay so usually premiere pro is for video and audio editing video and audio splicing combining them together okay it has a feature which I'm going to show you called multicam editing. This allows the program to combine video from multiple camera sources shot at the same time. So you can very quickly and easily adjust things. Okay. Color correction and grading can actually be done in either of the programs. They actually have very, very similar features for color correction and adjustment. And by similar, I mean they actually have the exact same feature, by the way. Okay. Audio fixing and sweetening is usually a job done by your video editing program. It's intent, not really a feature of After Effects. Video effects, they both have. Okay. Basically, video effects are anything that affects you're going to apply to video. 
you want to add to your video a glitch effect. It's going to be cool. So there was a question about um, the Cinema 4D that I was talking about. So included with Creative Cloud, specifically, by the way, included with the After Effects um, installation is Maxon Cinema 4D Lite. Cinema 4D Lite is a scaled back, though feature rich version of Cinema 4D. According to Adobe, they basically had Maxon make a version of Cinema 4D that basically includes what the majority of Affects users need 3D for, which for the record is mostly 3D text and logos. That's usually, again, what mostly it does. It's got some other features, but it's basically a big thing. So while you don't get the full Cinema 4D, you get a light version, again, absolutely for free when you install After Effects. If you have After Effects, check File, New, you'll find Cinema 4D is a file type it can make for you. It's kind of cool. Again, keep those questions coming. Sorry, let me adjust the audio. I think I was actually a little loud for a second. Okay. So After Effects is a motion graphics animation program. It is an animation application, okay? Very, very powerful, very, very cool animation features. Okay. Premiere Pro has some of those as well, just nowhere near as advanced. Okay. Video compositing, maybe green screen removal. I can do that in either program. So like I said, there is some overlap in what After Effects and Premiere Pro can do. Now, while I can do green screen removal, cutting out a green screen of someone, in either application, the features in After Effects are stronger for it. Okay. So keep that in mind. Even when there is similar features, very often one or the other program will work better than the other. That's just the way this is, okay? Motion tracking. That's actually kind of cool, by the way. It lets us do things like replace the screen on a computer with another screen. It lets us do things like make graphics follow along people. And I'm going to show you a head-to-head -head specifically on the feature that feature in Premiere versus that feature in After Effects so you can see exactly what they're really intended to do, okay? And like I said, both of them have video effects. If you use programs like Photoshop or Illustrator where you have like effects and filters and stuff, that's what I'm talking about in video effects. They're basically things that can alter your video, change your video, okay? Maybe I want to make my video look like a cartoon. Hey, I got features for that. Not the same ones, by the way, in both programs. Maybe I want to, um... I don't know, make my video look like it was uh, shot in high contrast, so everything's black and white. That's a video effect. Maybe I just want to make the video grayscale so I can basically do a film noir style look. That's a video effect. Okay, I can do that anywhere I want. And then finally, 3D camera tracking is a unique feature that After Effects has. So basically, when it comes to compositing, things that involve visual effects, things that involve combining videos together, After Effects' features for this are much stronger. It's kind of cool. I can track people's faces in After Effects if I tried. I can make things follow them. Kind of fun. So, while there are similarities, again, between the programs, and there are overlapping features, I can do some animation in Premiere Pro. I can do some animation in After Effects. You'll, you, you'll see that they're stronger in certain places than others. Okay. Ooh. Now. So, people ask this, so I'm going to include it. Um, how much does it cost? <laughs> Okay, so Adobe Software, if you're not familiar with it, is a subscription service. You don't buy individual software. Well, you know, sorry, you don't own software anymore from Adobe. You rent it. You license it for a certain amount of time. For their yearly subscription, it's basically, if you want After Effects or Premiere Pro, it's $20.99 a month. It's $21 a month. Plus tax, by the way. Okay. But what you'll find, usually for the record is that you need more than one of those two programs. If you're going to prepare or even need to edit graphics, you'll probably need Photoshop or Illustrator or both. Okay. If you're going to need to work a lot with audio, more than the features of Premiere Pro can do, you'll probably need to use Audition. Okay. That's just the way this works. In that case, you might want to get the Creative Cloud All Apps plan, which is 55 bucks plus tax. Um, by the way, if you're if you're a teacher or a student, they're actually they give you a massive discount for this software. So definitely check Adobe's website if you're interested in that. I'm not really here to sell their products. Just taste some cool stuff about it. But I am here to, by the way, just this is my 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 selfish promo. So again, I work for Noble Desktop. I'm I'm I run the video courses there. And so if you're interested in taking classes in any of this stuff, 
I'm going to put these links in the description, which is because this webinar gets recorded and it'll be, once it's live streamed, it'll be recorded and anyone can access it whenever they want. I'll have the description in the video below of where you can actually go and check out our website for our classes. Okay. But let's see what they can do. Let's see them in action. Okay. So I want to start with a, a couple of examples of how the, the programs themselves work. Okay. So I want to show you some of the stuff that you can do in either one. And it's just some samples that I have from, um, actually from our classes, honestly, what we teach. So let's look at that. <laughs> okay. So again, this is just the folder of stuff I'm going to look at. The presentation that I was just doing is right there. But an example of something that Premiere Pro is really good at would be editing an interview. Okay. So this is just a, a video of an interview with a colleague of mine, Dan Rodney. And I think I can turn on the audio for you to hear it. Okay, so that, that's like two minutes. I'm going to show that bit. But basically what it has is it's a sit-down interview with Dan Rodney. He's one of my colleagues. We recorded him in his studio. He's got this speech that he gives talking about his history and stuff and about design. And then we've got some other footage. This is actually this is actually a book he worked on, actually. It's pretty cool. I've been using this book, by the way, in school when I was in college. Okay. That's some more interview of him. And then he starts talking about his days in college. So this is actually... Little animated photo. Now, this is entirely done in Premiere Pro. The thing about this is that the video didn't come out this perfectly when it was shot. When we shot the video, there were errors, mistakes, and there's a bunch of stuff that we wanted to get rid of. And that's actually what this footage that's covering him is, is hiding. It's hiding the, those editing points where we're directly fixing stuff. This is an example of an area where Premiere Pro excels. It is great at working with any file in any video that combines audio together. So, okay. So, by the way, one of the questions I was going to ask, I got to ask the chat window about this. Which of the two programs is more difficult to learn? For the record, I don't think anyone would disagree with me on this. After Effects. After Effects is the more difficult of the two. And again, I'm going to pop it open and you'll see why. I have, to, I have to get this far. Okay. So that, that's a pretty cool, cool video. I like that one. Okay. And again, it's a really good example of the kind of thing that Premiere Pro is really, really, really good at. Okay. But there are other stuff that maybe wouldn't really matter. Okay. Now, this is an example of a composited graphic. It's got a video here. I don't, I don't remember there's audio in this, actually. No, there's no audio in this. Okay, cool. And this was actually shot in front of a green screen, this cup. And it was basically removed, animated, so it moves across the screen and reveals this. So this is an example of something I could actually do either in Premiere Pro or After Effects. Though I'd argue it's easier in After Effects. Okay. So this kind of like video compositing does have a home in Premiere Pro, but After Effects is just stronger at it. Okay. Now, some video edits are actually just... Uh, making a quick montage of clips, maybe to music, like this travel promo. Right. Now, all this is a series of videos, one right after the other, with some titles above it, okay? I could do that pretty easily in Premiere Pro, pretty easily in After Effects as well. So like I said, sometimes either program would work for you, okay? After Effects' real main advantage, however, tends to be in its ability to create graphics. That's really where it excels, okay? 
So if I wanted to create, actually, I didn't put this in that folder, but I have it over here. If I wanted to create, for example, a um, an animation in 3D space, let's say that I wanted to do here. I'll do this one. I'll pull that back one off the screen for you. Let's say I wanted to animate. Here's an example, actually. This logo. This is actually the Noble Desktop logo, by the way. Okay. This is the kind of thing that After Effects will always do infinitely more easily and more efficiently than Premiere ever could. It's a series of animated layers, by the way, from Adobe Illustrator. And this kind of quick, again, in this case, text-based animation, really hard to accomplish in Premiere Pro. But After Effects' features and ways of working with layered graphics make it really, really easy and efficient. Okay. Now, there's some things that I could never do in Premiere. Here's an example of one of those. This is a animation in 3D of this nice little paper cutout world. There's no audio here. And it's effectively a camera flying into this 3D environment with the fish moving sideways. Okay. It has a series of layers spaced out in 3D space. It has a moving camera and moving lights to this. This is something that I could never, ever accomplish as well in Premiere Pro. I could kind of fake it, maybe, but I'd never be able to make it look exactly the same anywhere, even where near half this good, I'd argue. This blurry depth of field effect is a feature that After Effects excels at. This 3D positioning and spacing feature After Effects excels at. Premiere Pro has no features for that. Okay, So, while I can do some simple animation in Premiere... When it comes to animation, After Effects is, is the key program here for this. Okay. So that's the thing to keep in mind is that there is some overlap in what they do. That promo that I showed you, I could have done in either one. That travel promo, no problem at all. I'm going to show you, by the way, how I could do it in either one. And it wouldn't matter which one in a lot of situations. Okay. But there are certain things that Premiere does that nothing else really could. This is actually, I need to hit the music back on for this. Okay. So the animated opening here, that's After Effects. Okay, no problem at all. Nice little, little opening for that. But what you see when you're looking at these two guys is actually a series of videos cutting from one to the next. And if you actually were to look at this entire video, you'd see that those videos stay in sync together. So how are these videos shot? Okay. So that video is made from these four clips. So when this was video, music video was shot, before you accuse me, they basically had four cameras set up at the same time, recording these two performers. Okay. This is camera one. Okay. Camera two is the closest of one of the guys. Camera three is the other. And camera four is just looks like pickup shots. Okay. Now... In order for that to be cut together into the project, I need the ability to basically see, synchronize all of those different videos together, which I can do in Premiere Pro. And then I need a tool to basically very quickly cut between them kind of efficiently so I can change which view we're seeing. Again, that's a Premiere Pro thing. So if your project requires a lot of adjustment to your video, a lot of adjustment to your audio, if it combines combining audio and video together, Especially if that audio video was shot together like that was. Premiere Pro's tool you're going to want to use. If your project requires more animation. If it's a graphic project. If maybe you're doing a, um explainer video, for example. If you're using graphics made in Photoshop and Illustrator. Then maybe After Effects is the tool of choice for you. Depends. Now, but very often what you'll find 
is that both programs are what you're going to need. Okay. Now, I want to look at the Noble promo that I have here. Because I want to basically show you how the programs independently would handle accomplishing the same task. Okay. So in this Noble promo ad that I have here, I basically have a series of video files that I want to combine together with a voiceover. Okay. And, and by the way, some music as well. So that's my goal. Now, again, this is the kind of thing that I would say that you could do in either program. I admit I probably would suggest doing it in Premiere Pro because of the amount of video you have to work with. But for something with the voiceover, I could do either one. Okay. I want to show you again how they each of them handle this type of project. So let's try that. Let's try that. Okay. So I'm going to start in Premiere Pro. This is Premiere Pro. Now, suddenly this is the actual welcome screen of Premiere Pro. I'm not actually physically in the program yet, but I'm in the welcome screen. So the first thing I got to do in Premiere Pro, by the way, is make a new project. It's just the way Premiere Pro works. It's a new project. Okay. okay. So I'm going to name this new project uh, Noble Desktop Promo. And I'm just going to call it uh, demo. And I'm going to choose where to save it. So I'm going to go dump it back in that folder that I have. Duplication. It's not bad at all. I'm going to find my desktop. Promo ad. And I'm just going to put it right in here in this main folder. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things I can actually do in Premiere Pro, which are pretty cool. I can actually go navigate to my to my desktop, to my files, I'll jump into that, no promo ad, and I can basically import my content right now. So I'm just going to import the, this video. Okay, I actually meant to click on the little checkbox to import the video. Okay. Now, all these options give me some choices, like I can make new stuff here. I'm just going to have them all turned off. I'm just going to import that video, make the project, and I'm just going to create. Okay. So it's kind of cool that I can actually import directly from the new document creation. That's actually pretty cool and pretty fast. If I'm working with a lot of different files all over the place, maybe it's not the most efficient way of doing it, but it works pretty well in this case. Okay. I'm just going to double click on this project panel because that's what the project is. It's this panel. Okay. And all those files that I imported are right here. Okay. Now I got a lot more stuff to import. I got some audio to import. I've got some images to import. So I'm just going to take all of these and I'm going to collect them together into a new folder. Now, Premiere Pro doesn't call them folders, it calls them bins, but... Please. So, Lorian, a little more detail on that question. Does AE have soundtrack capability? You mean, can I add audio to After Effects? Yes. Do I have much control over that audio? No. <laughs> so, for the record, what you'll find when I when I open to the same exact... I'm going to do the same exact product in After Effects. Let's get started a little bit. And you'll see that After Effects' ability to work with audio is much much weaker than Premiere Pro's. Okay. So I'm going to send a bin. I'm going to call this one video. I like number and stuff, so it equals zero, one video. Okay, that's not bad at all. So that's a bin's high bins. I'm going to go and import, just double click. I'm going to go import my audio and my images bins as well. Give me a second. When I grab a folder, it'll basically import the entire folder. I've got a Photoshop file in there. I want to know what to do with it. I'm just going to merge those layers together to keep it like flat. So I end up with that, that all together. Okay, it's nice, not bad at all. I'm gonna double click again to get that smaller. Okay, so I need to make a sequence. A sequence is the equivalent in this program of projects in every other file, of documents in every other file. So maybe you've made a Word document, you gotta define the width and height, what size paper you're using, okay? Maybe you've made a Photoshop file with height, resolution, that sort of stuff, okay? The project didn't ask me for any of that because the product doesn't have those things. What has those things are sequences. That's actually where you assemble all of your video and images and audio and stuff together. Okay. So I got to make a sequence. And for the record, I could actually make one from scratch, file new sequence. But I actually have no idea which of those choices to use. There's so many of them. Um, there's a couple of default ones I could try. But the simplest way to make a sequence is just do it from one of my videos. 
So I'm going to go back to my, my, I'm going to go back to my project panel. I'm going to open up my video bin. I'm going to look at all these settings here. So this is the frame rate of the video. This is the size of the video. And looks like the video is mostly the same size, 1920 by 1080, which is full high def size, pretty common. And I'm looking at it and I'm looking at most of the video is a frame rate of 29.97. So what's frame rate? So video has width and height. Okay, we call those the dimensions or the resolution actually. And it has frame rate because video is a series of still images played very fast. The American television standard is 29.97. 30. Okay. And some of the video here isn't. I, so this video is 25. Okay. This video is 23,976. I can mix and match video of different sizes, different frame rates on my timeline. Most, mostly no problem at all. But I want my sequence to match whatever the majority of my footage is. It'll just make an easier time for the program to work with. So I think that's good. I think, that, I think that'll be a good one. Okay. So I'm going to make a sequence from that file. I'm just going to drag it into the empty timeline. Where, by the way, it says, drop media here to create sequence. And that's a sequence. That's the symbol for a sequence. Don't get the sorry. That. Okay, I'm going to rename this. Noble promo. I'm going to pull it out of the bin because I don't want it in the bin. And then I don't really want that clip as the first thing in my sequence. I was just there to make the sequence. I'll trash it. But what I do want, I'm going to slide up and down a little bit, find this, is some audio. Okay. So, Noble Desktop VoiceOver is here. I'm just going to double click on it to preview it. It's a WAV file. Pretty common audio file option. And notice when I double click, it previewed right in here. And this is called a waveform. The waveform is the way that most of the time audio previews. It's volume over time. As I play, you should be able to hear this on my speaker. Let me turn my speaker a little bit closer to, to that. Okay. You should be able to hear it when this plays. This is the voiceover that we're working with. Design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. Whether you want to learn graphic design, video editing, UX, or web design, we have a class for you. Interested in coding? We'll have you developing websites and applications or analyzing data in no time. For years, Noble Desktop has perfected the craft of teaching. Our in-class exercises give you hands-on experience with real-world projects. Okay. So, now this audio was recorded separately. Um, and then I basically put it all together in Adobe Audition, Adobe's audio editing program. In Audition, I added these little markers so that I could basically mark off where each of the sections... There are actually five sections of this, by the way. An intro and outro and three lines were. I could have added more markers if I actually wanted to mark off each individual... PC he's talking about, which is no problem at all, okay? Now, that's what I want on my timeline. So I'm just going to grab it. I'm going to drag it right into my Audio 1 track. I'll hit Tab. Sorry, not Tab. I hit up. Uh, hit that. I, I pressed uh, Slash. I, I pressed uh, Backslash, actually. That fits my content of the timeline on the screen, okay? I also want to make these a little taller so easier to see. So that's Shift Plus on my keyboard. I can also manually drag them. So a sequence in this program is divided into what are called tracks. Now, by the way, they are not layers. Layers is a different concept, different behavior. Technically, this program doesn't use those. It uses tracks, okay? The difference between tracks and layers is that in general, in most programs, especially in After Effects, a layer is one object. Tracks allow you to stack content side by side so you can have multiple clips, they're called, inside of that one track, okay? So that's not bad, and I can see my little markers right here, too. If I over, hover over them, tell me what it is, okay? And I also want to see what this audio is. Oh, my, Patrick. Okay. A little, little loud. I'm thinking I like this section over here. This is four oxen, by the way. And uh, maybe this. Yeah, that's the section. Okay, cool. Right there. So, I don't want this entire 2 minute, 15 second audio. I want basically just from here and about 30 seconds of that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this clip. Any clip in Premiere Pro has an in point and out point. Then any clip period has an in point and out point. A point where it starts and a point where it ends. Okay. 
I on my keyboard marks an endpoint. And this is how you tell where you are on a clip or on your timeline. It's called time code. So my endpoint where I was, right where my playhead right there, which marks where I'm going to put the endpoint, 31 seconds, 24 frames. And I want to make this clip basically, let's say, 32 seconds. I want to be a little longer than the voiceover. Okay. Okay. I can do that. So what is 31, 24 plus 32? I have no idea, by the way. But if I click here, plus 3200, 32 seconds, zero frames, and tap return, it'll jump to that point. And I'm going to say out. Okay. So these buttons, mark in, mark out, or what I was using, I was using the keyboard shortcuts I and O. Any clip can be have its longer length trimmed down within and out points. Okay. Now I'm going to add that to the timeline, but if I drag it on top of my audio, it goes away. I'm going to drag it into audio too. And again, I'll put it at the beginning. Like so. So now what I have is my voiceover with my music. Okay. And I'm thinking that I want this music to fade in and out because that usually sounds better than where it starts like this. So I'm going to add an effect to this. Okay. Lower left-hand corner, I'm in the my default editing workspace here. Lower left-hand corner, I've got a panel called Effects. This is my library of effects. There's an effect called um, Crossfade. It's an audio effect. It's basically used to fade things in and out. I'm just going to grab it. I'm going to drag this up a little bit so I can see this a little better. And I'm going to grab it and drag it to the beginning of that clip. Okay. And I'll drag it to the end as well so I get a little fade out there. Okay. Now, by the way, there's a keyboard shortcut I could have used that I'll put it on both, but let's see where it is. So now that should fade up and fade in and out. Let's see how that sounds. Design code and create an old listing with you. See, now I can't hear him at all. And that's really, really, really loud. Okay. So I want to bring this down. Okay. I'm actually going to right click on it. I'm going to go to audio gain. And I'm basically going to adjust the gain down i'm gonna actually i'm gonna set it to negative 12. okay and that brings that volume down design code and create and all that stuff. make it a little more Wait, manageable to... a little more manageable now by the way it's still a little too loud with him so i want to bring the clips volume down a little bit more i'm just going to drag that little white line here and it's going to pull down the volume and for the record, if I preview this, I can do it in real time. Learn graphic design, video editing, UX, or web design. We have a class for you. Interested in coding? We'll have you develop it. Ah, not bad. I like that. Okay. This is entirely subjective, by the way. I might come back a little later and say, hey, the music's a little too loud, a little too low. Might want to adjust it some more. Okay. Now, I'm thinking maybe at the end, after he finishes talking, I want to raise this again. Okay. I can do that right here in my clip. This is my selection tool. It's like the selection tool in other programs. It selects things. But if I hold down my command key, or my control key, by the way, if you're on Windows, and I click along that little white line, I get those. Those are um, keyframes. They're used for animation. And if I drag that second one up, I can raise the volume of this clip as it goes out. So I'll jump to the end. Let's hear that. So it's low for all of its entire time, and then at the end it's animated Apply that up a little bit. to your own work. So what do you want to learn? And it still fades out. No problem at all. So this is actually where Premiere Pro is very, very strong. Working with audio and video together really, really well. Okay. Now I'm going to do a couple more things on this, and then I think I'll be happy with the audio. Again, slash fits everything in the window. This program also has, if I go to Window, I'm going to change my, my layout. So the workspace is Adobe's name for how everything is laid out. Okay. I'm going to go to the audio workspace because it has options for working with the audio. And I've got my audio clip now highlighted. There's a little background noise in there I don't like. I cleaned up most of it in Audition, but I think I'm going to maybe use a little bit more of it here. Okay. So I'm going to say this is dialogue. And that's going to basically add a bunch of effects to this that allow me to manipulate this, this audio clip. And what I'm going to do, basically, is I'm going to just 
doing a setting called Clean Up Noisy Dialog. And what it's going to do is knock out the background sound Wouldn't here. You want to learn graphic design? Clean that up a little more. UX or web a little design. Here. Okay. I think I also want to add some clarity in this. And uh, the room's a little, little soft. I think I want to make this sound. Add a little EQ. Okay. I just want to like boost his voice a little bit. A little, a little stronger. We have a class for you. Interested in coding? We'll have you to so it'll make the areas where his speech is a little louder, and I can actually make it a lot louder by looking at just the slider. And so it'll basically stand out even more from that background. Okay. And again, this is where Premiere Pro is really, really strong. Now let's go to our next part. So I'm gonna go back to that workspace I was in, which is editing, it makes it really easy to move things around. And I want to look at one of my audio, one of my video files. So I've got my soundtrack prepared. I've got my audio prepared. It's not bad. I can live with this for now. I might come back in and refine it later. No problem at all. I'm going to go back to my project panel. And I want to see my video. So I'm going to double click on it. And that basically turns that video bin into its own window. Which again, I'm going to double click on to expand. Now, I got all these names. And I did a pretty good job of naming most of this stuff descriptively, but I'm not exactly sure. So I wonder what these things are. So let's see if we can see this a little better. Ooh, icon view. This is a visual preview, and that's a scroll bar. I'm going to bump these up a little bit in size. So I can get an idea of what this looks like pretty easily. Nice, nice, big visual preview. But, you know, some of these are moving, so... Ooh, look, look what this can do. If I hover over this and just drag left and right, I can actually have a good idea of what this content is. Okay. That's that's pretty good. I like that. That that's not bad at all. Okay. And then I can add this to my timeline. Okay. I'm thinking I want to start with a, a the instructor teaching. Okay. Let's look at that. Double click. Oh look, I can preview it right here. So basically. The way the audio works. Design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. Whether you want to learn graphic design. Okay, design, code, create at Noble Desktop. Now, I actually don't want... I don't actually want... Well, actually, I do want video here. I want, actually, the, the instructor right here. But only in this area. So, this video is 18 seconds. Let's see what happens if we're going to drag it into the timeline. It, it's really big i don't want that okay i only want it in this little part of my timeline so here's what i'm gonna do on my timeline i'm gonna do what's called a three-point edit on my timeline i tapped i at the beginning of the clip to mark an endpoint. i'm gonna go to this first little marker i made where the o intro ends i'm gonna tap o to add an out point this gives me an area on the timeline that i can add my clip to okay that's what this does now, so what I've done is marked off an area on the timeline to control the duration of the clip I'm going to add. And all i got to figure out in here is, well, what part of this clip do I want to start with? Uh, there's no audio here, by the way, so it's just video. Not bad. I mean, it's got some nice movement in there. But I think it might be good to start with a shot of, of him when his hand is up where he's moving like this. So... I think it would be somewhere around like 8 seconds or so is a good thing. Maybe like, let's do 725. Left and right arrow keys, by the way, move frame by frame. So 725 is a good starting point. So I'm going to mark an endpoint on this clip. So, in, I'm saying in, I in, and out, O U T out, okay? So I have two points in my timeline. They control the duration of my clip, okay? I have one point in my source. That controls where the clip from the source is going to start. That's three points. This is why I called this a three-point edit. Okay. So I've got that, and I need to add it to my timeline. So what can I do? I can drag it in. Oh, look, it ignores, the, it ignores all of this. It doesn't care. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, There's a keyboard shortcut I can use. It's actually, by the way, this button right here over right. But I can also just grab this video, and I'm going to drag it into my program panel. And I'm going to say, hey... Overlay this. And what it's going to do is it's going to line up the endpoint from the source with the endpoint on the timeline, stop it at that out point. So again, I was said I was controlling the duration of the clip. And it's going to put it on the first track that's available, in that case, video one. So I end up with that. 
design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. With it. Now I'm thinking I also want to add like an animated logo on top of that, but that's a little bit. Okay. So now I've got this area when I want to add graphic design. So let's see about that now. I'm just dragging my playhead around. I'm going to press shift to snap it to that first clip. Look, another endpoint. And I'm going to play it. Whether you want I'm tapping spacebar, by the way, to play it. To learn graphic design. That's what graphic design like. Graphic design. That's good. I like that. Look at that. Oh, for out. This is the amount of space I want to put that graphic design clip in. Let's go look at that bin again. Which one of these? Oh, look. Look. Graphic design. Graphic design. Those will work. I like this one, by the way. So, again, I can see it nice and visually. I'll double click. Now, where do I want this clip to start? Well, I like that. I think that would be cool as she's zooming in. So, again, in point. In out. In. It's going to line up in to in and just stop at the out point. I'm going to drag that right in again do the same thing. Oh, I got a problem. Okay. So, because the clips are overlapping, doing trying to do that command puts it on the next track. I don't need that. I'm actually going to stack them together side by side. So, I'm going to use this one overwrite. Just drops it right in there. Oh, but look, there's a problem. That one had audio. I'm going to undo this. Keep undoing. Control Z or Command Z is your friend. So, I want only the video from this clip because I don't want to mess up the audio. And I want, again, only the video from this clip. And I want to put it right there, right next to the second clip. So, I'm going to keep them all on one track. Okay. At the bottom of the preview source, there's a little drag video only button. I'm going to grab that and drag it onto overwrite. Because what does overwrite do? It, it puts it on the main track and it basically covers or replaces anything that's, that it's intersecting with. Now I've got one. Design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. Whether you want to learn graphic design. Okay. And then again, I would do it again. Video editing, you. So, so I'm video editing at that point. Right about there, I'm thinking. In and out points. And then I would go look for my next clip. Okay. That. Now, one of the things I can do, which I did not do, is I can actually control the preview, how it previews. So that was my second clip. Okay. That was my first clip. I'll drag that to the end. And I'm thinking I want this video editing one to be my third clip. So I can basically listen to that voiceover, listen to that audio, and I can visually line up my clips so I can figure out which ones I'm using. This is the last one I'm going to do in this example, by the way. Okay. So again, double click, preview again. The source panel in Premiere Pro previews whatever you double click on, and it's used specifically to make these in and out points. So I'm thinking there's a nice little part where it moves around here. So that might be good. So in point for that. And again, same command. Right over right. Oh, look. More audio. So I grab the drag video only button. Do the same command. And it only takes the video from that clip. So the program makes it really easy for me to add only the things I need to my timeline. Only the things I want to my timeline. Makes it really easy for me to trim and adjust those clips. Okay. And if I need to use another part of this clip, I can always go back in. Make new in and out points, no problem at all. Very, very easy design to help you very quickly add content to your timeline. Okay, that's how that works. And I can keep doing this to get the rest of this over and over again, over again. So design, right now I got these code things. and create at Noble Desktop. Whether you want to learn graphic design, video editing, UX, or... Okay, and then I can cut the rest up and that sort of thing. Now, let's look at how After Effects would handle the same project. Because it can do it, it's just not, it's just not intended to. So it's a little harder, okay? But we can make things work if we really try. After Effects, okay? So first of all, this is After Effects. After Effects does not have the same welcome screen. After Effects does not make me make a project first. After Effects automatically makes a project, okay? Now, so I got a project. I'm going to save this project because I need to save the project. And again, I'm going to go dump it in the same folder that I had before. It's on my desktop. It's in my Premiere Pro After Effects folder. In my Noble Promo Add folder right here. I'm just going to call it Noble Desktop Promo, and this will be an After Effects project. Like that. Okay. Now, some of the things are similar. Okay, let's look at this. So, we got a project panel. That's like the project panel in Premiere. We made it first automatically. We got a timeline. Okay. 
instead of having those two preview windows side by side, one that previewed the timeline and one that previewed anything we double clicked on, that was source and program, you got one window, okay? But some of the other panels are similar, like effects and presets. That's basically the same effects panel that I got my effects in in After Effects. I'm oh, sorry, in Premiere Pro, okay? But there's a bunch of other stuff, like I've got these in this info bar. Tells you info about whatever you click on, okay? So if you anybody here uses Photoshop, After Effects is closer to the layout and thought process of Photoshop than it is to a video editing program. Some of the things about it are very similar, but even if you look at the tools, most of the tools here are really designed around creating and manipulating graphics and layers, okay? So it's basically, think of it as, for those of you who use Photoshop, Photoshop with a good timeline. And I say that because suddenly Photoshop has a timeline. It's not as cool as this one. But what can I do? Okay, same thing. Let's do file import. So I got to get my stuff in here. Okay. No problem at all. So I'm going to go again, no problem, add. That's my video folder. So I'm going to highlight the video folder and open it, which is going to import that all at once. Okay. Not bad. Now, one of the main differences is I actually, if I double click on a video folder, it just opens and closes it. After Effects doesn't have that same visual preview that Premiere Pro does, okay? It's based on names. If I click on anything, I can see a preview here. And if I double click on things, I can open a dedicated footage preview window, which again, lets me see what's happening here. Okay, I'm gonna close that for, for now. I'm gonna grab the audio and the images folder. I'm gonna double click on empty space to launch import. I need to go find my images and audio folders right here. Okay. And again, they'll come in. No problem at all. Same thing. Photoshop Illustrator file brought in. No problem at all. Audio file. Okay. And here's the next big difference. So not only does the preview window not exist the entire time, it only opens up when I double click on something. Um, there's no visual preview for audio. If I press space bar, which is the preview command, it'll play. Design, code, and create at noble. But there's no visual preview for it. Okay. Just not. Uh, audio is the weakest part of After Effects. Okay. Even if I look at the effects here, there's hundreds of effects that, that affect the visuals of, of your content. And there's maybe 16 that affect audio. It's just not a strong audio program. It's not built for it. But maybe I can still make it work. So I'm going to keep footage over there. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. In After Effects, they're not called sequences. They're called compositions. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. I want to make it from one of my files. I believe, which one did I make it from? I made it from Classroom Pan before. So I'm going to make a, sequ a composition from this. Again, I'm the same thing. Drag it into my empty timeline. That's my timeline here. And that makes a new comp. Which again, I'm going to rename. Oh, look. So last time, that name was editable very easily. I just click on it and rename it. Um, I can't do that here. If I double click on it, it would open the comp. There's no effect at all. See? Okay. Did that just crash? Okay. So no, that was that was that was funny. Okay, so how do I rename this? I can right click on it and choose rename, or I can highlight it and tap return on my keyboard to make the name editable. So I'm gonna call this Oh, I spelled that wrong. Again, main again. And I don't want it in the bin, I'm just going to drag it right out. Okay. Again, I like numbering things. I mean, you don't have to. It's fine. I like numbering them. So, zero, 01 for video. I'm going to call audio zero, 02. Okay, and I'm going to call images zero, 03. The reason I like numbering things is because I like when I can get them in the same order, and I can use the top columns to control the display. So that way I can keep things nice and organized. Okay. So that's not bad. That's good. Again, I'm going to drop that out because that was not going to be the first clip of my timeline. Okay. Now here's the other thing that's that's a little tricky. So in um, Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro, I have an infinite timeline. Minus, 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 minus. Keep zooming out. That's eight minutes right now, okay? And if I get to the end of this, it'll get longer. But in After Effects... Compositions have a set length. This one is actually 13 seconds, by the way. 
So in After Effects, when I made this composition from that video file, it made it the same size, but it also made it the same length of the video, which is a little troublesome, okay? So I need to adjust this composition, composition menu, comp settings, and I'm just going to give it a new length, okay? I'm going to say here, you're going to be, you're going to be, the entire length I have here is not going to be a minute. So I'm just going to say a minute, one minute, zero seconds, zero frames. Okay, like that. And then I say, okay, or I click away. Same time code display we had before. Frames add up to make seconds, seconds make minutes, minutes make hours. So I can easily fix that timing issue, but like I said, it was basically there because that's the way comps are made. And that's a different season. So comps have set lengths sequences do not okay so like i said a little easier to again combine all this footage together there so again same thing i want to bring in the exact same clips i did before so again since i can't really see them i'm relying on the names and i'm clicking on them okay nope not that one instructor teaching that was the one i wanted okay again if i drag this in that clip is 18 seconds long but i only want a part of this there are no in and out points on my timeline doesn't work that way so I basically have to be a lot more careful with how I pull stuff in. Okay. So I'm going to grab my Noble promo. It's a voiceover. Drag it into my timeline. Okay. I'm going to zoom out. There's a little scroll bar on the bottom. That's my audio. So I've got the markers again. That was in the file. That's here too. No problem at all. Okay. I'm going to grab my audio. Okay. But again, notice it's so long it sticks off the edge of the screen. Okay. Now, here's the basic problem. Again, audio has no visual preview here. So, to preview this, I gotta do it in my timeline. So, I'm gonna make that longer, make that longer, make that longer, and I can see my audio. It's not quite as easy to manipulate or adjust because it's just not built for this. But, like I said, if I, if I try really hard... Design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. With I can make it work. Okay. So, this was actually the area that I wanted before. So, I'm gonna basically shorten this clip so that it starts here i'll drag that to the beginning now i got this design that, code that section of my timeline okay now here's the other thing um i don't have any built-in transitions for this so if i want to animate the volume i'm gonna have to do it manually so that transition by the way in uh, after effects was one second sorry in premiere was one second long so i'm just going to basically animate the audio levels which is the volume I'll start with a keyframe here by turning on the stopwatch saying the audio is going to be normal volume. And then I go to the beginning and I lower that number. Okay. To be honest, it goes really, really low, but anything pretty much below negative 45, you're not going to hear. That creates a new keyframe. So at the beginning, your volume is really, really low. And then one second in, your volume is normal. So what's it do? It fades up. Design, code, and create. And like that. Okay. Now, again, my only problem is that that volume of normal is really too high. So I'm just going to go here and change that keyframe right on top of it, by the way. Let's go with negative 16. Again, I can visually see that the waveform is adjusting. Design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. With the That's a little too high. Now, look, every time I do this, I have to go back to that keyframe. Because if I change this here, let's say negative 20, that makes a new keyframe. So when I have to manually animate this, I basically have to be very, very careful about where I am. If you're on top of a keyframe in After Effects and you make a change, let's do negative 20 now, it updates that keyframe. Any place else, it makes a new keyframe. Okay. Which again, quite problematic. Design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. What? Okay. So you can see, while I can splice video together here it's not really built for it it just makes it a much more difficult job than than i'd argue i want to do the other issue is that everything here is layer based so let me go add in my video again that teaching front of classroom sorry 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 it's not that it was the instructor teaching sorry so i'm gonna double click to open that in the footage window i don't actually have in and out points on the timeline here so if i want to basically add this I'm going to just try to figure out the part that I want to start with from here. 
Okay, I like that. It's not a bad area. Now I can, in the footage window, set an endpoint. This clip now, when I use it, is only going to start from here, but it'll take the rest of it. So I'm going to drag that into the timeline, and I'm going to drop it above the audio. I could drop it below. I wouldn't really care. And, and that's the result. So it makes a new layer. So now the basic difference is that in this program, things are, in fact, layer-based. So I can grab the end of the clip and shorten it to make it match only the area I want it. Design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. Okay. Now, that wasn't that bad. Here's what happens when I want to try to add the next one. This is talking about the graphic design. Okay. Design, it is, oh, do, do. woman designing on a computer. No, sorry, yeah, it's, yeah, I'll do that one. Actually, that one. So I'm thinking, again, I want to start it here where she's pinching it. So again, I'll mark the endpoint in this footage. And I'll drag that into the timeline. Okay. Now here's the first thing. I couldn't stop the audio and video from coming in. I had no way of doing that. Okay, now this is actually a little smaller. Okay. And I'm going to mute the audio so that the audio from this won't play. Now the problem is that this is a layer. It's not a clip. There's no way for me to put this exactly next side by side. Each layer is independent. I can drag it so it starts later. That's what I'm trying to do. I try to drag it so it starts next. So I'll get this like cut between design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. Whether you want to learn at that. Okay. Now, by the way, to make that large, I'm just going to right click on the layer. I'm going to transform. I'm going to fit to the comps width. That's going to scale it up. Design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. Whether you want to. Oh, what's that black? See, so that black is because I didn't exactly line this up properly. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. There's actually a gap right there. I'm just going to pull that back a little bit until they snap together. And now that'll avoid that little... little Design, space. code, and create at Noble Desktop. Whether you want to learn graphic... Like that. Okay. So, After Effects is a layer-based program. It's not a track-based program. Each item I add is a separate independent layer. It's got its own properties to be manipulated and adjusted. And they technically don't fit side by side. I can basically keep sta stacking up like stairs. Okay. So when... Again, I'm going to open my audio a little bit. Waveform. Okay, by the way, I actually have a preview setting that's different than what I want. By default, I'm actually previewing from the start. I want to preview from where I currently have the playhead. It's a little easier to preview this with this. Whether you want to learn graphic to... So right there, that's where it says graphic design. Okay. I'm going to zoom out some more, and I'm just going to grab the end of that clip and trim it down. If you hold down shift, by the way, you make things snap. So I basically have to keep stacking this up and up and up and up and up, and I'm creating this kind of stair step effect. Design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. Whether you want to learn... So I can do it. I can edit this promo together here. I'd argue it's a lot more difficult than if you did this in Premiere Pro, which is kind of built to put these things together. Okay. But it can be done. So this is an example of something that could be done either one program, and I've seen people edit promos in After Effects like this, but it's clearly got a easier fashion of working in a more organized flash has a way of working using Premiere Pro. Okay. So in that case, what would you use After Effects for? Okay. I'm glad someone asked. No one asked, by the way, but I'm going to pretend. So I'm going to close this After Effects project here. Close project. Okay. What might I use After Effects for? Animation. Okay, I'm going back to Premiere Pro. Because I got, I got about... Um, 20 minutes left. So I want to basically show you how they're designed to work together. Now, by the way, that was the same size issue before. Okay. I'll right click on that clip, same way I did in After Effects. I'm back in Premiere Pro for this. And there's a command set to frame size. It just basically scales it up just like the similar command in After Effects does. So like I said, there is similar features in both programs. The main difference is that this track-based system tends to make it easier to combine things side by side. Here's an example of that. This is two clips side by side. This is my effects panel. And I'm going to grab Cross Dissolve from my video transitions. Cross Dissolve is a video fade. That's what it does. Whether you want to learn. Okay. Fades, especially Cross Dissolve, by the way, are used to ease the transition. That's why they're called transitions from one clip to the next. 
because After Effects is a layer-based program. It doesn't actually have anything exactly like that, though it has the ability to manually animate like opacity and stuff. Okay. So there's a lot of things actually that, that this system have going for it to make it really pretty efficient. Okay. But again, part of my point is that it's not that they're designed to do the same thing. It's that they're designed to work together. Okay. So for example, I, I would like to place right in here a animation of the Noble Desktop logo. Okay. So I happen to have that. And I happen to have that made in After Effects. Now I need to get it here. Okay. Now let's let's look at this what I made. I was so file, I'm gonna open my project. So I'm back in After Effects for this. So I made a animated logo using the Noble Desktop logo in Illustrator. Okay. So Noble Promo Add A E this one. This is the actual project. Okay, so this is an Illustrator file. And what I built in After Effects, again, using its layer system, is this animation. Okay. Now, the only thing here it's not an Illustrator is this text design code create. That is actually, in fact, an After Effects text layer. Okay, but all the rest of it is, is from Illustrator. Okay. Now, this grid is just a preview. I'm going to turn that off. It's just helping me line things up. And this black background is actually transparent. It's empty. So when you see in After Effects a background color, you really see empty space in general. Which means I can bring this in and put it on top of something in Premiere Pro. So this is where After Effects excels. It is an animation program. And it is a very, very powerful one. A very, very efficient one. Okay. And I can bring this file right here, by the way, right into Premiere Pro. And it's simply a file import command. Okay, again, give me one second. I want to rename these things. I like I like order, so. I always number my uh, my bins because it just makes it a little easier to, to, if they're in order. Because I can basically use the top column to control the direction they, they are in, ascending or descending. So I want to make a new bin. I'm just going to make it manually. Click on the bin. I'll call this one 04. AE for After Effects, okay? And I'm going to pull in right from here. It's full. It's highlighted. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for import, Command-I, or Control-I, by the way, if you like. Windows. And that's not a problem, by the way. This program works equally well on Windows and Mac. So if you're a Windows user, Premiere Pro and After will work for you. If you're a Mac user, no problem at all. And if you don't use either one of those two, um, the programs will not run. So again, I mentioned at the beginning, it does not run on Chrome, it does not run on Linux, it is a Windows and Mac software. So I'm going to go back to that Noel Promo Add folder, back to that AE folder, and I'm just going to highlight that After Effects project right there. And that's how I import. It's going to give me a list of the compositions in there. And for the record, by the way, this is one of the glitchiest parts of the, of the connection between the programs. Every so often, I have to like close this and basically re do it again to get that to pop up. That's the comp. See? That's the comp. Logo animation. That's what my animation is. I'm just going to highlight that. I'm say OK. And that gets imported right into my project panel. And then I can just grab it, drag it, and drop it right into my timeline. Like that. OK. Now I'm going to trim this down because it's way too long for what I need. I'm just going to trim this into that with my selection tool to make it match the area I want. And now what I got, again, Shift Plus, I'll just make that a little bigger. I'll drag the dividing line down, so it's a little easier for me to see. Okay, and by the way, if I want, I can make these shorter by dra or longer by dragging the um, scroll bars on the side. I don't actually have to keep them as tall as they are. So that's the After Effects composition. And if I play it, Design, code, and create right a mobile desktop. Whether you want to learn graphic design, video. Okay. No problem at all. <laughs> and if I want, I can even add transitions to it. I can fade it out if I wanted to. Add it across this all at the end. Design, code, and create a mobile desktop. Okay. 
I'm thinking I want this to be a little longer, so I'm going to pull this out to like three seconds exactly. So it basically crosses over the two clips. Now, the original composition was a set length. I just made sure it was longer than I would need Design, it. Design, code, and create a noble desktop. I bet. Whether you want to learn, crap. Okay. And then someone says, hey, we really want to add a little um, drop shadow or a little stroke to design code create. Or we want to get a little bolder so it's easier to see. Okay. This is the After Effects composition. And there's a command. Edit. Edit original. That'll open that in After Effects again. So I'm just going to go to where I can find that text. I'm going to turn the background color back on so easy to see. That's the text layer. And I'm just going to close that window. I'll double hit the text layer. That's going to open the character panel for me to edit it. And I'm going to change medium to bold. Make text a little easier to see. I'm also thinking I'm going to go to where the text is outlined here, the, the stroke. And I'll make it black so I can actually see it. I'm going to make that a little bigger, five, five pixels. Okay. Now, for the record, by the way, if anyone's familiar with type, there's a danger to... There's a danger to um, putting a stroke around text. It makes it actually hard to read the text. I'm just going to adjust this so that the fill is in front of the stroke so it doesn't actually quite become quite so hard to read. And I'm going to save that. And now that's all updated. Oh, look, it's a little close together now. I'm going to go back into this, highlight my text again, and I'm going to bump up. This is the tracking, by the way. It's the space between the uh, characters. I'll bump it up to 25, make a little e little more space between them. Save it. It updates. And that's the advantage. So there's a question about can you control the crosses off speed. Okay, so technically, no. The basic thing about transitions is that they occur at a set speed. I can control their length which basically does affect the speed. So let me hide this track for a second. And noble desktop. So whether you want to the length of the cross is all let me zoom in. Plus zooms in by the way in the timeline. In both programs. So the default length of a transition in Premiere Pro is one second. It's actually a preference. So technically that's what controls the speed of the transition. So if I double click on the transition, I get a dialog box to control its duration. So if I lower its duration, let's say 15 frames, it's a faster transition. So a faster cross is all. Whether you want to like that. And if I change it, let's say make it two seconds, two, zero, zero. Two seconds, zero frames. That'll be a slower cross is all. Great at noble desktop. Whether you want to learn graphic to that. So that's pretty much how you would control the speed of a transition. It's actually the duration of the transition that controls the speed. Um, but that's it. Technically, like I said, transitions have... They don't actually have a speed setting. They have a duration setting. But that's, that's how, in video editing programs, you control the speed of a transition. I cannot make out the last question, by the way. It looks like 1010... Question mark? So, and this is what we don't see in, a, in After Effects, honestly. It doesn't really have a crosses all feature. I can manually animate the opacity of one layer into another to kind of fake a crosses all, but animation programs tend not to have that same kind of control. It's okay. But they're not designed for it, honestly. Not, not really. And create a noble desktop. Whether you want to learn graphic design, video editing, you let me turn that track back on, by the way. Back to the beginning. Design, code, and create a noble desktop. Okay. Whether you want to... So this is really how they're intended to work together. Things that I need to do in one, I can basically do, cut my clips together, and then I can import, again, pre-created After Effects projects into Premiere Pro's timeline and use them here. I can also use a command in, After Effect, in Premiere Pro, sorry, file, dynamic link to make a new FX composition right from the timeline. So if I hadn't already had that logo animation completed, I could have made a new project here and then imported my Illustrator file to animate right in After Effects. So I could basically use this as the hub for pulling in or creating After Effects content. Okay. Now I actually want to jump ahead for this one because I have a file where these are all laid out on a timeline. 
Because I want to show one more thing about how they work together. Because again, that's really what they are. They're intended to work together to accomplish your tasks. The straight video editing in Premiere Pro. The effects, transitions, animation in After Effects. Okay. So I'm going to close this project because I don't want to accidentally confuse what I'm doing. I don't want to open my Noble promo at all clips on the timeline. So this is actually the final promo ad with everything here. Design, code, and create at Noble Desktop. Whether you want to learn graphic design, video editing, UX, okay. or web design, we have a class. So there's a couple of problems that I have with the video that's it added. Works. So for here, for example, I'm thinking that I want to blur out that screen because while this is stock footage, I, can, I know I can use the video itself. I'm not actually sure about if I can use this screen's content. Okay. Now, that's a very common thing you got to do. Basically, blur out parts of a screen. Maybe you need to cover a license plate. Maybe you need to cover someone's face. Maybe you need to cover a logo because you don't want to promote a certain brand or something. They used to do this all the time um, on MTV. They'd blur out uh, drug paraphernalia logos. Okay. Um, the UFC, the mixed martial arts thing, would it blur out competitor logos all the time. And you still see this constantly. Okay. So that's something Premiere Pro can do. That's a pretty straightforward job. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that clip, and I'm going to find my effect for it. Okay. This is in my editing workspace, which is the default workspace right here, this little menu. I can find effects. It's just, I can't, it's, I don't have enough space to sew everything at once. So they kind of like stack over sideways. And I'm looking for a blur effect. There's an effect that's very common called Gaussian blur, or Gaussian blur, whatever. I'm just going to drag that onto that clip right there. I'm going to zoom in a little more so I can see it a little better. Plus, plus. Now, it's on the clip. How do I know it's on the clip? Um, because the little FX button has a different color than it did two seconds ago. The greenish-gray background. No effects have been added. The purple background. Effects have been added. But I only see my effects when a clip is highlighted, and I go to Effect Controls. This is where my effects are. And that's Gaussian Blur right there. For the record, people add multiple copies of the effect all the time. Just be careful. So I'm going to raise the blurriness. Let's go to about 50 on this. But it blurs everything. So my problem is I don't want to blur everything. I only want to blur that <laughs> screen. So I'm going to jump to the beginning of the clip. In this program, every effect has a little series of buttons underneath it. An ellipse, a rectangle, and a pin. It's a fountain pin head, by the way. So, these make a mask. So, I'm going to click the rectangle because the screen's basically a rectangle. Now, the blur is only inside of the mask. And I can use my cursor just to drag that around to cover the screen. Like so. Okay. Like that. Now, by the way, the mask has a couple other settings. Like, feather is the softness of the edge. I can basically use that to basically blur out the edge so it basically fades in so it's not quite as abrupt how it ends. I like that. That's nice. I'm going to go actually 40 by the way for this effect. It also has a mask expansion setting which if I raise makes the mask larger and if I lower it makes the mask smaller. So I can again use that to just tweak the edge let it and move the points around. I only see when I click on the mask that's when I see the points that I can adjust. Now, that's not bad. The only problem is is that the screen moves around a little bit, but it's staying pretty close. But that's pretty nice. Okay. So I can keep that. If it moved more, I'd probably have to use this option in Mask Path to track it. This will basically let the mask analyze the content of the screen and stay along with it as the camera's moving. So it basically keeps it all together in front of it at all times. Again, I'm going to click away from the mask name to hide the edge. And that's what I've got. Okay. And I can blur anything. I could blur their faces, or I could apply any effect to it. The idea behind this is it allows me to keep an effect only on a certain part of my video. You can use that for color correction. You can use that for, in this case again, obscuring things you don't want to see. Okay. Maybe there's a logo on a shirt that you want to blur out. That's This is what that's for, honestly. But sometimes that's not what you want. Sometimes you want to replace the content of a screen. I want a new screen there. And honestly, Premiere Pro is not made for that in any way. It is not made for this in any way, okay? Replacing the content of a screen is a job for After Effects. And now my problem is also Design, that... Design, video edit. Let me actually... This, this moves... 
I'm sorry, I'm just going to mute my audio, sorry. This moves a lot more. Uh, that's kind of jumping around a bit. So, this is the kind of thing that I really need to track with. So, After Effects has... So, yes. Um, and it actually has much stronger ones, honestly. So, if it's just a simple track and burr like I just did, I would do it in Premiere Pro. Works really well, no problem at all. If I have a more complex job to track, there I am. Okay. So here's the problem with tracking. The moment anything moves in front of what you are trying to track, it's called an occlusion, and you can't track something you can't see. So if you're trying to track something and something moves in front of it, that's where the problem would arise with what I just did. After Effects has features to correct that and fix that, and After Effects actually comes with a really, really powerful add-on that they give you for free called Mocha AE. I have enough time just barely to show this, okay? So I'm going to do this. Let me go back to After Effects for one second. Let me save this project and close it out. Close project. Okay, I want no projects here, okay? This is one of the cool things about the working relationship between After Effects and Premiere Pro. This Premiere Pro clip, I'm going to right-click on it. And from my menu, I'm going to replace it with an After Effects composition. It's going to make a new After Effects project. This one, by the way, right here. I'm going to call this one Tracking. Actually, I'll call this one uh, Promo Add. Track. Okay. It's going to open After Effects. It's going to take that clip and add it into an After Effects composition. Okay. And then, I'm going to save that, by the way. In Premiere Pro, it replaces that clip with the After Effects comp. This is no longer the original video file. This is now this After Effects comp. So, for example, if I did something, I'm just going to do something absurd with this, by the way. Posterize. I'm going to add posterize to this. Okay. That's posterize. Here, let's do four, three. Okay. This is not my, my goal. I just want to show you what happens. So, I change it here. That's now the result. So, this is actually not the original clip. It's been replaced with that After Effects composition. Which means anything I now add in After Effects will pop up there. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go import one more thing from my folder. It was a replacement file for the screen. So this is actually what I want to put on the screen here. Video, After Effects demo, right there. Okay. I want to put this. Okay. On that screen. That's my goal. So while I could blur it, I definitely could. I actually want to go one step further. I want to do something actually harder. I want to actually replace the screen. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to add an effect that comes with the program. It's right here in Boris FX Mocha called Mocha AE. Drag that onto my clip. Boris FX Mocha is actually a program made by Boris FX designed specifically for tracking. Tracking allows the program to basically analyze how something moves and make something else move with it. And I'm going to use this like so. This is actually a third-party program that is basically licensed by Adobe for use in After Effects. It's called Mocha AE. Okay, I'm going to register later because it's a new version. That's why I didn't get that. And this is Mocha. Completely different program, but very, very, very powerful. I'm in my classic mode for this because I like my classic mode. Okay. For the record, usually I work on a much, much larger screen. I had to basically bring the screen size down to preview here. So what this lets me do is I'm just going to take my little X spline tool right there and I'm going to draw a mask, a spline actually, around the screen I want to track. This is what I want to track. Okay. This area. And I'm drawing that a little bigger than the screen I want to replace. What the program's going to do is it's going to basically analyze the content here, try and figure out how it moves, and basically make something move with it. So this hopefully will work out pretty well. I don't think I've ever tried it with this video before, by the way. Now, to replace the screen, I'm going to turn on an option called Planar Surface. This is actually what it's going to actually track. I'm going to use the Zoom tool to zoom in so I can see these edges considerably better, by the way. Hard to see. Hard to see. Okay. Now, for the record, I'm actually going to cheat and use the keyboard shortcuts. X, when I hold it down, gives me the hand tool so I can pan around. Z, when I press and hold it down, gives me the zoom tool. These are Mocha's keyboard shortcuts. 
And I'm basically just going to take this and put it around the screen I want to replace. Again, I'm going to look at each edge, grab those corners, and put it right around the screen I want to replace. I'm just basically going to replace the little bit outside of the, of the window here. Uh, I'm going to basically take over the entire screen, by the way, for this. And one more on the side. Right there. That's not perfect, but it should be pretty good for this. Okay. Um, Asterix on the keyboard fits everything in the window in Mocha AE. So that's not bad. I can actually test um, the preview by putting a grid in here or putting a logo in here to see how it actually looks. So my spline, my layer, my mask is a little bigger than what I want to track, but that little S, that planar surface, that is the screen I'm replacing. Okay. And then I'm going to make a couple more changes. I'm going to basically bring this minimum percent setting up to about 90. It'll make the tracking more accurate. It's going to track position and things like that. And I'm just going to see if it tracks. And if it fails, I'm going to stop it and try it again. No. So the spline basically sets these other pixels you want to follow. So you basically make the spline cover whatever it is you're trying to track. In this case, that was the screen in the area around it. Okay. That's not that much movement, so it should actually stay with it pretty well, by the way. Um, and normally you make the spline a little bigger than the thing you're trying to track. So if you're trying to track, like, here, let me turn my camera back on, by the way. If you're trying to track, like, my hand moving here because you want to put a graphic over it, you'd basically make the spline a little bit bigger than the hand itself. It's that content you're trying to track plus the empty space around it or the non movement around it, usually, that helps the track bet be better. But if you are doing a screen replacement, the planar surface, that blue box, that needs to exactly be on the screen you're trying to cover. Okay. So that did a pretty good job of staying with it. It didn't drift or move or anything. It did pretty cool. Okay. So I'm going to rename this layer that it made. That's what the spline made, by the way, to screen. I'm going to save Mocha. I'm going to close the Mocha window and go back to the main AE window. Now those settings are actually stored right in here. Okay. So I need a layer to apply this to. Layer new solid. I'll make it the comp size. I could not care less about the color. It's irrelevant for me. But I am going to rename this one uh, screen. Okay, here's my goal. I had to take the tracking information from here and put it on that screen. Again, it's just a solid layer, so I'm going to hold the, the data. Okay. So I'm going to go to tracking data. I'm going to create the tracking data. It's going to load it into the effect. I just want to make sure screen is on. Okay. Those numbers all changed. Corner pin is how you track the corners of that surface. Okay. And I got to tell it the layer to apply to. It's going to be screen. And then I can apply. And what I end up with is that red screen surface following this exactly. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that screen. I'm going to turn it into a composition. This is a command called precompose. It turns your layer into a comp. I'm going to leave all attributes and just call this screen comp. Why am I doing that? Because I can't put anything in that surface. The layer, is, the solid layer is a solid color. But if I open it up, I can drag something into here, like my AE demo. Okay. And now, that's what's on the screen. Now, by the way, for the record, I should have been more careful when I made the lower left-hand corner lined up because it's a little off. But I can always go back into Mocha and fix that and reapply everything. So now what I have is that, that content on the screen. Okay. I don't actually like where that is. I'll double click on that. I'm just going to pull that layer a little further over. So it start in, starts and ends with a little bit more of the word accused visible. Okay. Now that's the content of that clip. I'm going to save it. I'll go back to Premiere Pro. And now that's the content of that clip. Like that. So I've replaced the screen and After Effects, no problem at all. So, and by the way, if you're looking, this is this is not obviously a tutorial on um, on Mocha, which is amazingly powerful, and I love it a lot, by the way. But if you do a search on YouTube for uh, motion tracking with Mocha AE, there's a million tutorials. I strongly suggest that you look for the ones that are from the company that makes it, Boris FX. They have some really great tutorials here, and they have their own really cool channel. So, um.
but it's pretty cool. But that's one of the advantages, that screen replacement that I can't do in Premiere. It is specifically an After Effects feature. Okay. So, yes, there are some things that you could do in either program, though I would suggest that each of them has their own strengths and weaknesses. Splicing video together, working with audio, audio effects, audio correction, is a Premiere Pro strength. Animation, moving layers around, compositing, screen replacement, that is an After Effects strength. And the real power of the Creative Cloud comes when you use these programs together, as I did here. They are intended to work together. They are not intended to be competitors, they are intended to be collaborators. But it's fun. That's the all the time we have tonight, actually. Well, tonight, I'm, I'm in New Jersey, so it's basically like 7.30 my time, sorry. Um, I don't know where you all are, so it might be not night. But that's all the time we have uh, today. So, any questions? Hit me up in the chat window. I am monitoring that so I can answer your questions. Okay. Um, if you want to reach out to us, you this again, this webinar is being live streamed right now, but the live stream will be available for rewatch anytime and replay anytime you want. If you have any questions on it, you can type them into the chat window in the replay. And we monitor that, so we will actually definitely answer. Oh, okay, so for the record, this is actually a good one. This is, this is not a, technically a competitor to us, so I can actually mention this. Okay, so if you're interested in learning about the effects in um, After Effects, there is a really cool um, YouTuber named Jake in Motion. Okay, here, YouTube... Okay. Jake in Motion, basically, it's this guy, Jake in Motion. Great guy, great guy, great guy. Um, I've never met him, but I assume he's a great guy from his personality here. He actually did a series of videos where he broke down almost all the effects and after effects. This is amazing because this is a lot of videos, and he goes through a lot of detail on it, actually. Okay. But yeah, if you're looking for the effects and after effects, definitely check him out. If you're looking for the effects in Premiere Pro, um, I don't, there is another YouTuber who did the effects in Premiere Pro. I do not remember his name, however. Um, if you actually, uh, add, um, if you actually add a comment on the replay for this, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it and I'll try and find his uh, link and link it to it in our, in our comment section. I'll try that link in the comment section. But yeah, once you learn After Effects, it's just learning all the hundreds and hundreds of effects that it comes with, plus hundreds and hundreds more that you can get. Some for free, some not. <coughs> cool. So, thank you everyone for attending. I hope you've enjoyed our session. Again, anything, if you want to reach out to me, you can use the comments on the YouTube page for this replay. And I will definitely respond to you. It's always fun. Thank you. This is Jaron Smith for Noble Desktop, signing off. Thanks, everyone, for attending. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.